A famous explorer once said that the extraordinary is in what we do, not who we are. I finally set out to make my mark, to find adventure. But instead, adventure found me. Welcome back to another episode on Beho Reviews in Gaming and Entertainment. In this episode, we will take a look at a trilogy of games made to serve as a reboot of Lara Croft as a Tomb Raider. We will review the Tomb Raider reboot in 2013, Tomb Raider, the sequel, Rise of the Tomb Raider, and the last, Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Before the reboot changed how we look at Lara Croft and her exploits, I only played the Sega Saturn version released in 1996. To me, this game looked fantastic and was a game to look forward to when you're looking to 3D gaming. But I hated the controls as they felt too closely to Resident Evil's tank controls. At that time, I usually just watched my friends play as they seemed to get a better grip on the new 3D gameplay. We also had the Gears of War series on the Xbox 360 and the Uncharted series on the PS3 that really pushed the third-person shooters. I always was jealous of the Uncharted for its fantastic adventure, acting, and storytelling that seemed to be outmatched. Then came Crystal Dynamics, and that changed everything. Not to say that they truly dethroned Uncharted in any way, but we truly had a great contender. Crystal Dynamics started to feel Tomb Raider out with Legend, and then Anniversary, and then Underworld. They took the feel of the original Tomb Raiders, and updated control scheme and overall quality helped the game, but it didn't have the action that Gears or Uncharted had. Not to say that these were bad games in any means, but a change was imminent. In 2013, a Tomb Raider with a young, inexperienced Lara Croft enters as how Lara became the Raider she is today. The game became a pure third-person action adventure, but pushed back the puzzles for more action and storytelling. The game allowed leveling up with RPG elements that allow Laura to become stronger in different ways that the player exceeds at playing. I myself was more straightforward running gun than making bombs and stealth. This is where the game really excels. The action is so smooth and easy to jump into that you crave for more. Each time you attack, whether a bow or gun, you feel the impact as you feel like a professional killer. The stealth kills make you wish that you never were on Laura's bad list. Search underwater? Search everywhere. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> the writing is also exceptional as Laura transverses around the island becoming stronger and dealing with what she has done. Overall, I've never been a puzzle guy but completed all the tombs just for the chance of getting stronger with unique weapons. Exploring the world also didn't disappoint with incredible vistas made climbing, jumping, swinging all the more fun. It had just the right amount of action, adventure, and my non-favorite puzzles and tombs. In 2015, Rise of the Tomb Raider took everything from 2013 reboot and expanded on it with better graphics, crazier vistas, a tad more tombs and puzzles, but pushing the limit in design and overall quality. Boy, did this game look great. The story involves Laura experience with Trinity as the main adversary as she pushes further to prove her father right. Laura comes in as a one woman strike team as she now is able to kill without any real sympathy and it gets worse as the series progress. I enjoy this game so much that it was like watching rise and fall of a legend. Overall the storyline pushes Laura on her unending quest to chaos. Even though you know she's willing to do anything the ride is so much fun. You become invested to see how it turns out. Any protagonist is at their scariest when they have the means to do so and the will. This is not your burden. Of course it is. My father died for this. 
You can't fill the emptiness inside you, Lara. You can only set it free. I'm gonna find it. With or without you. The game itself is an amazing adventure with more characters to interact with that is a bigger and more robust version of the first, but truly identifies with Laura and her past. Shadow of the Tomb Raider, released in 2019, is the last of the trilogy, but developed by Eidos Montreal. Boy, did they take notes. The game pushes the possibilities of what you thought possible until you see it on screen. The design and graphics prove that even the current gen games can muster the unbelievable. Gameplay is the same, which is not a complaint, and very easy to choose on how to take care of the enemy. Overall, the same formula is there with huge vistas to explore. The best looking in the series with a storyline that finally pushes Laura to the edge, forgetting about everything except her compulsion to beat Trinity while alienating her friends and allies. Oh, Trinity, we have to find the silver box! Okay, but first, we're going to help these people get to safety, and then we'll go after the box. No, no one is safe! Not if he gets the box first! I have to go! I'm the only one! You're the only one that can what? You don't know that you caused all this, Laura! Not everything is about you! These people need us here. We can do good now! Besides, what do we gotta go on? A riddle? We're gonna need more than pink fish and silver crowns to get to the hidden city. The game has so many tense moments in action and adventure, you stop thinking about what Laura will do next in trying to save the world rather than the truth. The story really pushes character development with answers for Laura's past that sums up the story. A great finale to the trilogy, although following the same formula to get there. The biggest cons for the masses is what Laura tries to be or what she becomes. They question how many she has killed and still tries for goodness in her heart. I don't think much on this con as you watch Nathan Drake take out hordes of bad guys without question. Yes, Laura's executions are a bit more gruesome, but most action games will have the player taking out waves of enemies. I truly enjoyed the series from the first as the most balanced to finding out what Laura becomes to a shattering end where she needs to decide what real role she will partake. The trilogy of all three games combined gets an 8.5 out of 10, with fantastic designs and places to explore, to great storyline, to some of the best action and gunplay I have had my hands on. An old formula, but a good one to follow. A must play for those wanting a good, balanced action adventure game full of quality. That's it for me on this episode on Beho Reviews. Please like and subscribe if you like my videos. Beho out and Greg. Take us out of here. Sometimes I feel like I have to keep going, and if I don't, then I'll just let everyone go. This, this is the first of many catastrophes you're doing. I have to go. I'm the only one. You're the only one that can work. Yeah.